Hey, everybody. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 380 for November 12th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly. And I'm another one of your hosts, Adriel. So, yeah, that's it. Adriel, I like your background with the uh, laser beams, the freaking laser beams. Freaking like cats with laser beams. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, that's cool. Do you have a green screen? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I should really get one. You don't need one. Uh, wait, you do because you got a whole bunch of stuff in your background. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was thinking. I should really get one. It'd be fun to put up stuff too. But that's for another time, another place. Where'd you get it, by the way? Where'd you get the blue green screen? Amazon. Do you want one? How much is it? Don't worry about it. The show will get it for you. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want one. Then you can make your own backgrounds and have That'd like be weird stuff. Awesome. You know what we should really do is mm-hmm. we should actually put up the logos and. See, you're putting up cats with laser beams shooting mm-hmm. out of their eyes. I would say let's put up like the logos for the show sponsors because that would be the responsible thing to do. Cats with laser beams. <laughs> you're not selling me on this idea. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So why don't we get into what, what we did in guns this week? Uh, what we did in guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center. It's Canada's premier retail fire. Oh, look verbatim it's gone what happened to it oh yeah, it is gone huh. it's kind of just premier yeah. firearms Fire retailer, retailer. Mm-hmm. check them out online see we already knew what it is and then we're going oh it's gone anyways what did you put in here because it's a lot of stuff and my it's eyes a 1022 gone. they have the What's backpacker yeah, it's a it's the backpacker it's the very light backpacker 4.2 yeah. pounds satin yeah. stainless uh it's the uh x22 backpacker stock on it fiber optic front sight adjustable fiber for the rear and uh it's $759 yeah not bad mm-hmm. um and the 1022 backpacker is okay but i don't really like the really light one at all it's, it's really not like. a good not, maple no. seed rifle no, but it's, it's a not. good like hunting rifle fantastic super yeah. light they're packable, easy to like uh, put in a backpack or take out yeah. to the, to go hunt prairie chickens or whatever prairie chickens. Yeah. What I don't like about them is, well, we might. I think we're going to actually talk about it a little bit later in the show. Mm-hmm. Are we not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do that? And mm-hmm. I'll tell everybody why I don't really like it as much. The takedown, I don't really like it all that much, or the backpacker, as a, as opposed to the ten twenty two. Still good in a pinch, pinch right. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Pinch. Well, how'd they come up with that saying? I'm going to have to go research that now in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Adriel, what did you do in, in Guns this week? I went to a three gun match. So Yay! We, had a, we had a three gun match at Chaz on the weekend. Uh, yeah. How'd that go? Uh, there was a lot of snow. <laughs> <laughs> got, okay. Uh, I don't actually, I, I can't, what did I say? 20 centimeters over yeah. like a 24 hour period or so like a lot we got a lot of snow it just kept coming and so uh, mm-hmm. you wore your walking abominable snowman you know yeah. sleeping bag yeah. i saw i saw pictures guys sent you a picture of what my weather was like <laughs> and you this is a thing we do I, was, I know we brag about our weather to each other and yeah. I, I was i wasn't bragging well, I'm bragging uh-huh. a little bit because it's more of like a ha ha, this is Alberta. And, yeah. Uh, it sucks to live here in the winter, but tough. <laughs> and I was saying karma. Karma. Uh. Mm. So how'd you do? Yeah, I did. I did it right. It was, uh, it was a good match. So I, I didn't wear the sleeping bag for the morning. For the morning, uh, I was it was a shoot uh, reset kind of a setup. So yep. half the day you shoot, half the day you reset. And I was shooting first. So I put on all my like regular stuff that was easy to take on and off like a big jacket that i could just throw off and do my run with just a sweater on and (laughs) freeze my ass off (laughs) and uh i ran a cup i I ran my first two stages with no gloves and by the second one like my hand was so cold like i I, like my my dexterity was gone and i was starting to like i couldn't get the mag in and the everything was slow 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 so uh, for the first time in, I don't know, three years, I, I ran gloves. And that includes shooting really? like minus 25 and that kind of thing. It's just like the snow and the wetness. Uh, yeah, as that's well what it as, in. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was slow, it was slippery, and I, I just had to wear some gloves. So mm. I did that. Um, yeah, I won, I won uh, in, 
my division overall and whatnot. Uh, okay, I, I, had, I had a good match. Uh, like in a, a match where it's minus ten and snowing is as much uh, a competition of whose guns are the most reliable. <laughs> And who has stamina? And who has stamina? Well. And like yeah. because it was snowing so much, like the later on in the day it got, the more slippery it got. So oh, yeah. uh, I I did have an advantage by shooting in the morning because uh, in the afternoon everything was a lot slicker. Mm. Uh, How many people? You said that last time we were talking about it, there was a few people that there were spots still available. How many people I think actually I had 30, shot it? Three, thirty-three people out. That's still pretty good. Yeah, for like a November match when yeah. you know most people are out hunting and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. true too. It's hunting season. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good match. I I shot in the morning, um, and I, I I knew I had a pretty decent match. Uh, I still have like some footage I want to put up on YouTube here, just showing what it's like shooting in November. Um, yeah, I'd like to see it. I haven't seen the. Uh, I have. I've saw stills, obviously, but I haven't seen any of the videos. So I'd like to see. It's it. hilarious how much snow is falling. <laughs> it's hilarious? No, it's not hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm in Alberta. Today like, was cold here in Ontario. It was 11 degrees yesterday. We've had 20 degree weather for the past week and a half. So hmm. I'm. Hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit colder out here. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. Um, yeah, so in the in the afternoon, it really cooled off. Uh, wind picked up, got like twenty kilometers an hour, uh, which at minus ten is pretty cold. So yeah, uh, that's when I cracked out the sleeping bag. So I took I took off my jacket. I I just wear the sleeping bag, and it was yep. so warm. Like I had it unzipped most of the time, and everyone was like, "You have that thing unzipped." I was I was bragging it up quite a bit, quite uh, a bit. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised somebody didn't actually beat the crap out of you. <laughs> oh, it made such a big difference, and I was so yeah. warm for yeah, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of beginners out uh, at that good. match as well because yeah, that's like, good. usually again, like at our past matches, it's like oh, you you got to sign up the night it opens, otherwise you can't get in. Right. Whereas this one, it was like it was open up until like that you know, that Friday. So there's a lot of people where it's like, uh, can I just go? And I'm, I need a shotgun. And it's like, yep, someone will hook you up. So, uh, that was nice. I like, I like to see a lot of new people out. It's, uh, getting into competition is something that, um, not a lot of, uh, firearms owners ever do. Uh, mm-hmm. but the ones that do, it's like, it's a, it's a game changer, right? You, you, you learn so much and, uh, and you get to see the community a little bit better. Like, yeah. I think just, if you just went to the range and just shot at the range as a range member, you don't really get a sense of community like you do if you're shooting with the same bunch of uh, people uh, on a monthly basis kind of a thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the match was great. Uh, my stuff ran really well. Did I have any jams? I don't think so. Maybe like one. What, okay, so yeah. you were talking about what you might be bringing. What did you actually bring? I ended up bringing out my uh, WSMCR mm-hmm. um, because I kind of want to get more rounds into that thing just to see if it is going to wondering. be like my long my long term. Yep. Everything's been good so far. It's been it's running it's been, well. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It, it ran well. Uh, I cooked the long range stage. Like it wasn't that that long. wasn't that far of shots, but uh, but I smoked that one pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. What was everybody else running in the long uh, in the rifle? A lot of WKs still. WSMCRs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tavor. Twenty um, twos. PCC. That kind of thing. And you said. So you said it wasn't all that long, but what was the range? Because... 200 meters. Oh, okay. So people... Hard for a PCC or a 22. Right. Like you got some arc going on in uh, up yeah. to 200. For me, just uh, just get that dot on the on the target and start hammering it. So yeah. uh, uh, pretty easy to do with that one. And then I ran, my, I just ran my Shadow 2 and... Uh, Shotgun. A5, that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yawned. <clears throat> Which um yeah uh, they ran fine. I was considering running that red dot pistol. I might still in the winter. I don't know. Uh, there's there's one more match in December, but <laughs> from the way the COVID's going in Alberta here, I don't. I, I don't, don't know. know I, I don't. Do, yeah, I don't do know if you're. Uh, yeah, my, you guys are. What are you doing out there, anyways? Are you hugging each other, rubbing whatever. up against each I, I other? I said it before. What, we're what are doing, doing whatever we want, <laughs> and that, that that comes with some some downsides. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, a little bit a little bit of spread going on here. Yeah, Ottawa, or sorry, not Ottawa, Ontario has taken over the lead in, well, you keep saying, well, it's based on per 100,000, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Alberta's in the lead on that. However... No, Manitoba. Manitoba's got us beat. 
That's what oh, it was yeah. like. Oh, That's way true. in ahead, way in the, in the head of us. Well, they but they're only yeah, but they're only like three hundred cases per day. Like we're we're now up into the we're I'm I'm sure that by the end of the week or next week we'll be at two thousand cases a day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have the population still too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots yeah. of people, lots of people to get sick over there yet. But Manitoba is definitely winning. Uh, someone was asking, do either of you plan on picking up the new Nodax Spud NDS 18 SC? I am like about that, right? looking hard at that. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, uh, let's see. Why would I buy one of those trigger? Uh, I could use like, I don't care what kind of trigger comes in. I don't care if it comes with a trigger. I've got like two really nice AR triggers. I could throw into one of those at any time. Yep. Um, mm, yeah, You've been know. talking about it for a while, so you should just do it and do a review. Hell, on bolt it. release, bolt release on it, it's sick too. I can I can pull out my bad lever. Ooh, make use of that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Cabela's discount card alert, November thirteenth to the fifteenth. Cabela's is offering a ten percent off in store purchase with gift cards, limit of five per household. Uh, Use the gift Cabela's link on the Slapfire Radio website and spend them. So this is actually from Brian Rance. Hi, Brian. He's from Winnipeg. Um, so you can give the That's guys... That's the epicenter hey. right now of, of Canada. Brian's right. like... Brian's surrounded with COVID over there. Uh, if I got an NDS and it was like solid, I don't know if I would keep my WK or MCR. Like right now, my, my idea is I'm going to use my WK as a coyote rifle because it is accurate. Like the accuracy is fine out of it. Um... But I've got so many other guns that I could use for that. Like I have a bolt action two two three. That's probably like just as good for for coyotes. Yeah. I've got I don't know like a bunch of other stuff I could use just as easily. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I if I would keep either of them. I might just move them out and uh, move on to the NDS if uh, yeah. if it's as good as it's, as 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 it looks so far. It's it is looking really good. Uh, so um, both Bren. Hi, Bren. Friends from Manitoba, and so is Brian. He's from Manitoba. They're both saying Manitoba through the wind, and they're also sheltering in place. Well, you won't be able to shelter in place if you're going to Cabela's for the discount. But that being said, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, you know, I, was, I was going to go hunting this, uh, this weekend, but uh, there was a couple cases in one of my kids' schools, and they were here. Right. So, and I, in they're close home. contact... So now he's home. home. So now uh, uh, I'm waiting for a test result for him before I do anything. So I'm not, I'm not going to go hunting this weekend. I'd planned on it, but I don't want to, I don't want to get my parents sick and, no. uh, yeah, and potentially know. be the cause of their demise. So I will, uh, I will not uh, this week, maybe next weekend, right. maybe next weekend. If that, if that test comes back uh, negative, negative. Uh, next weekend would be, would be fine. Yeah. And I'm just going to yeah. take some time off and like, try to get all my hunting in there because <laughs> otherwise that's uh that might be it so <laughs> for the for this year in terms of hunting because if our ca- our cases are, are are skyrocketing right now in alberta and uh at, at it's 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 getting to be more and more risky so i think that uh they were talking about putting together a little bit more restrictions for alberta too so they did today yeah, back with that. I should look at what they have for Ontario, but nothing, anyways, nothing that really affects me. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, they're going to be putting more in, more in. By the way, this has nothing to do with guns. So. Yeah, let's talk about guns. <laughs> um, well, we're like we were talking about the December match for for every gun, whether whether that goes forward or not. Um, yeah. Which isn't my call, and I, I, you know, if people are going to go do it, great. Um, my Brownells order came in. Uh, oh, right. so I got all that stuff. Yep. Cool. Um, bunch of 1022 like pipping out stuff, which we'll talk about later. Yep. Let's talk about that stuff later. Hmm. Uh, it's got some end block clips, got some of this stuff that I have to drop off because whenever I do an order that's like a big order somewhere that has like free shipping, I try to get as many people as I know who are like, hey, do you want to buy anything as well? So I got some stuff I got to drop off at other people's places. Yeah. It's always great to save on shipping by combining orders. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 the idea. That's I, and I think that's a good idea because it uh, mm-hmm. helps make it easier. Helps to uh, and helps helps friends know about deals as well. Because like Brownells yeah. had, I'll, I'll I'll show one just because the deal on it was so incredible. But Brownells had these paddle uh, magazine releases. Yeah, you were telling us about that. For How much was it? Uh, yes. So what's it made out of? Plastic. It's plastic. plastic. Yeah. I think I have one of those downstairs. 
I think yeah. I, read, I have a, I have some parts downstairs. I should probably start playing with. Anyways, for, for so for the maple seed loner rifles, it's like oh well, that, that would be nice. Those are those are quite easy to use, and so I grabbed a yeah. couple of those. Uh, and that is it. Uh, this weekend, if I get no, and I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get a test back, but if I do get a test back, uh, that's negative, I'll go hunting. Yeah. If I don't get a test back, I'll do nothing, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Do yes. nothing. Do nothing. You're not supposed to do anything <sighs> until you get the test results. I'm on slam fire. Yeah. That's but something. that's on zoom and you can put up pictures of cats with laser beams. I'm virtually talking to many people right now. You are. You're interacting. <laughs> you're in my bubble from how many thousand kilometers away? They're all in my living room. Uh, yeah. That's that's about it for me. So uh, what about you, Kelly? All right. So I did a few things. I was, and I didn't put in the show notes, so stay with me. So the first thing that I did, remember I said that I was going to potentially go to SFRC because I was going to meet somebody. So mm -hmm. I went to SFRC and I met up. And by the way, remember when you said, uh, you know, possession is nine tenths of the law. Mm -hmm. Corey Johnson is back in Ontario. So <laughs> I have like clicked. permanently though. I feel like this is just like a visit. I, I got him for sure. Right. You know, no, he's <laughs> Well, you just said it. Alberta is actually just going out of control, but maybe he's going to stick around here. So, anyways, so I met up with uh, met up with Corey at SFRC. He's never been there, so I was super excited about going there. Well, he was actually at the old SFRC, mm -hmm. uh, and then he um, came up to see the new place. And then also his uh, wife Cassie came too, so it was great to see them both. Uh, Cassie um, and I got to chat up. Uh, a little bit because uh, she's um, somebody who is a peace officer up in Lac La Biche. So mm -hmm. it's fun. She's telling me all about some of the things that she was what, that was happening. So it was pretty good. We had a uh, great day scouting around. Uh, SFRC actually had a 16% off sale going on too. So I took advantage of that and I picked up some 9 mil because you know what? You never know. Never and know I, when it's going <laughs> to run out. <laughs> so I picked up a few thousand rounds of 9 millimeter. I bought s and I was going to get Blazer, but I picked up s and instead. It was a little bit cheaper. So, and then I got the 16% off. It was 300 bucks for 1000 So not bad. What grain? Okay. 124? Uh, 124, yeah. So, anyways, some of the some of the one fifteen stuff is right around the two seventy mark, depending on how much you buy. Yeah. Uh, but I think most people prefer one twenty four, one forty seven. Yeah. So they didn't have any one forty seven. So one twenty four is what I was looking for. Um, hung out with everybody. It was kind of cool. Walked in, you know, and I'm going, hey, and everybody's, like, hey Kelly, hey Kelly, and that, and so I was kind of like. Yeah, Corey's going, this is like your cheers, right? And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so SFRC on Saturday, actually bought stuff. Uh, and then on Sunday, I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning on the Sunday and headed out to uh, Ottawa, so EOSC, uh, Eastern Ontario Shooting Club. It, it was our last Maple Seed event for Ontario for the year. And again, I sent pictures to Adriel because it was 20 degrees. I was wearing a t-shirt. People were wearing shorts and we had a full line and we had a fantastic day and we had three more uh, riflemen. So add that to the list there, Adriel. Uh, three more on top of Alberta. You win. You I win know. this year. <laughs> And we also had one guy who shot the maple seed, and he scored a 245. So he missed five, five points. Yeah, so he missed it by five points. Anyways, and he also missed the record by one point, too. So he said, you know what that means? i got to come back, he said. So... <laughs> It was it was good. He was actually a repeat rifleman. He scored rifleman earlier this year at Stittsville. He was on the line with his brother. And his brother, this is the third time his brother came, and his brother was determined that he was going to get his patch. And he actually did. And he scored <laughs> rifleman on all three MQTs. Now, that being said, um, because of the time change and uh, also because the days are getting shorter too, we were efficient. And I mean efficient. Nobody was allowed to go to the bathroom. Nobody was allowed to go for a break. No, I, I let people go, but we just rolled everything with it. Our POIs, which is our point of instructions, were very, very, very 
um, concise and we just and we didn't wait for people on the line we actually helped people individually because we had enough staff to do that as well so if people were struggling to get into the slings or anything like that we just rolled it and we were able to get three mqts in and then get our last mad minute target ed shot and also do the um, recap at the end and we were and we were packed up and out of there by quarter to four nice <laughs> mm, nice and i mean we were packed up like i had put everything in the trailer so it's kind of like wow right it's possible but it's it possible. possible just gotta hustle it was good. We had a we had most of the line were repeaters, so they knew what to expect, right? And then there was a few people who were brand new, but we mm-hmm. we were working with them individually, so it's really, really oh, quite, yeah. yeah, quite helpful. So this uh, this week, what we've been doing, what I've been doing, is every night I've been posting for the calendar uh, teasers. So those are all the ladies that are in the calendar, and we're posting pictures that actually didn't make the calendar. They um they're pretty freaking awesome pictures but uh we're selling out our calendars like you wouldn't believe and we're just letting people or reminding people to not register them until january 1st um because um uh, they're not active until January 1st for the raffle. All the ones from 2020 still actually, we still have draws for that in December. So, and then once actually January 1st rolls around, then the 2021 calendar is available. Uh, I want everybody to go out and buy one, go and buy one anyways. I know that people are saying, well, you know what? It's, it's $20. You register for the raffle, you get prizes throughout the year, and not only that, you're helping support the women's program, which means that we're going to be able to actually have events um, all over across the country. And we're having some events still with COVID happening anyway, still. So anyways, um, the last thing I did, I know last year I got uh, a couple emails from people about it, but here's the thing. So United Way at work is actually... so. We at work have a fundraiser for United Way here in Kingston. So I offered a day at the range for people. And we got a couple of emails saying, well, United Way, da, 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 they don't support you know, gun owners or whatever. By the way, that's down in the United States, most of it. But up here in Canada, it's a little different, but it's also within our community. And guess what? I'm okay with actually you know, promoting our sport and taking people to the range and actually taking that money and it going back into our community and it being Mm -hmm. something that's based around um, getting people to the range and having fun. So I put up a day uh, to do it. Uh, Every year there's, so the auction goes on and it's one of the highest bidded, 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 what's what bid, bid on? Highest bid. Highest bid auction pieces so they usually raise about 250 300 dollars and i supply all the guns and all the ammo and everything and then we just go to the range so it's a good day so i did that as well so i don't know it's supposed to go live tomorrow or the next uh, or tomorrow or monday and then we'll see who wins it and then i'll take them to the range so it's awesome i think everybody should do that too and i'm all about not hiding anymore or whatever proponer sport so yeah that's it um trying to think oh wednesday night ski night I went mm-hmm. so uh it is officially dark uh by 4 30 now so we went to the club kelly and i it's just her and i and um it is dark at the club so we were shooting with the lights on this time and awesome yeah i don't know i'm jealous it's probably not as good to shoot under the lights rather than just in like daylight uh, i'm I, i'm still I, jealous I, yeah, I struggled a little bit. I struggled with seeing the clays a little bit. Uh, but um, so I didn't do as well as I had hoped I would. But station two, hi, house. I got it solved. I got it figured out. Uh, nice. Yeah, so I was able to do that. And not only that, Kelly and I just had it. You know, it was a good good time. Shot, shot some clays anytime that you're actually shooting. It was a good night. So that's about it. That's what I did in guns. And also, oh, yeah, I am going to probably, we'll, we'll be sending out pictures. You'll probably get some drunk texts and all that. But we are, like, we're ready for this weekend. Tomorrow Looking forward to it. It's Friday the 13th, and it's going to be Tracy, Kelly, and Kelly and Tamara. We're going to be going out to a cottage in the middle of nowhere with, I've already bought the boxes of wine. And I say boxes oh. of wine. <laughs> Oh, the headaches you guys are going to get the next day are going to be epic. 
Oh, uh, yeah. I already bought those. We've already planned who's bringing what. It's going to be great. We're just going to have so much fun. And there's you no... Get, um, you know those uh, those camelbacks that have like the hose that you like just yeah, suck yeah. on? You should get those and then fill them up with the box wine. Yeah. 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 And that way you don't get, you know, the red wine mustache. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last time I got one of those. All right. That's it. So why don't we talk about upcoming events? Uh, upcoming events is sponsored by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is uh, a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively with a firearms vertical. Uh, they help business processes, strategic planning, websites, and e-commerce spell the stigma uh, at the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. So why don't you go and give them a little love, especially if you're looking for some help with that as well. And there's nothing in events. So, anyways, it's not going to be not going to be a lot. Hey, uh, Chaz, uh, three gun match is open for December. Lots of spots available. Oh, bring a mask. <laughs> bring a mask <laughs> and bring one of the bring one. Of I mean, it's uh, it's outdoors. Bags. Like the the nice thing about like the shooting events are outdoors. You don't have to necessarily like be right in someone's grill. It's not like uh, I don't know, like choir practice or something like that. Where there's like a lot of like yelling and speaking moistly next to be, to each other like it's it's out on a field right so yeah uh i guess that that stuff's all better for you know and you know, right and you do squads too are you doing time like people can arrive at it noon and then shoot and then get the f out of there or no no it's too much work like setting up and tearing down you need all the bodies you can get okay yeah no. all right so uh yeah that's about it. But if you guys do have any events that are going on or things that are going to be happening in 2021, let us know. We'll put it up here. We'll advertise it for you. We'd love to hear. News. Well, there is no donations for the CCFR Legal Challenge. Or we didn't get up to date on it. So, um, yeah, that's about it. But you have some IPSC stuff going on. Tell all us about sorts it. of stuff. Well, I mean, this is USPSA. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's US-based. Um pretty rare so that's that's why i thought i'd bring it up because this does not happen very often but there was a a death in uspsa uh on the 10th or 9th or something oh, like what that. happened uh the ro you know, so the ro for for a match uh was roing and the competitor missed their holster and during <gasps> reholstering their pistol yeah. dropped it went off and it uh, it killed the ro so oh shit yeah, this was um, at the Genesee Con- Conservation League, uh, which where's where's that? I'm not sure. Uh, like we have a, a like my Chaz is the Genesee Range technically yeah. out in Alberta here. Uh, I'm not sure where it is in in the U.S. Um, but these are these are very very rare. Like for the amount of shooting and the amount of people, um, it's a it's a very safe sport. Um, like I, I don't I've I've never heard of a fatality at a USPSA match before. Um, we did have one at we had one at an uh, match in, yeah Canadian Ipsic match three years ago. Um, but again, other than that, I've never heard of them. Never heard yeah. of them. So uh, they're very rare. Uh, one thing that was kind of interesting about this one, um, just in a, a technical sense, was that uh, it was a uh, uh, shadow, a CZ shadow that uh, that did this. Um, they're not. They don't have really? like a firing pin block or anything yeah. like that. It's actually one of the things that gets omitted with a shadow is that they don't have a firing pin block. Um, so I'm I'm half curious to see if uh, USPSA or IPSC will put in rules based on uh, based on what happened here because uh, it would appear that this gun what isn't drop safe and uh, and and went off when it fell this time. Do you think there were some modifications that made it that way though? Um, I don't know. I mean, like the hammer, uh, it, 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 like this, this is a, a freak accident, right? Gun yeah. falls directly on the hammer on concrete. And that was enough to push that hammer past the sear, which like, if you look at the hammer and where it engages on the sear, it's not much. It's a tiny little shelf of, of steel that it's hanging onto. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what failed. And then the hammer was allowed to hit the firing pin and go off. Wow. Uh, that would be prevented if there was a firing pin block in there. Um, oh, actually, well, you know what? No, it what? didn't even do that because if he decocked that hammer, that hammer is just sitting there and, uh, yeah, I, I guess a fall onto it would, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not asking you for know, much. So I'm wondering if he actually did. So he must've 
what I'm assuming is he actually decocked it. Ready, decocked yep. it, went to holster it, and then missed it. it. Just yeah. missed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, that's you know wow, 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 wow. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. The next one, uh, in in two pieces, two of the three <laughs> pieces of news here I'm talking about are, are Alberta related. Uh, this first one is the Alberta Firearms Advisory Committee. Yep. Uh, they have a survey and some town halls they're going to be doing. So I'd encourage any of our listeners who um, who can who are Albertans to uh, fill out that survey okay. and uh, register to participate in one of the telephone town halls as well. I know that you're supposed to be from Alberta. <laughs> To register and to, to participate in the survey, uh huh. You're supposed to be, yes. Uh huh. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just saying, you're supposed yeah. to be from Alberta. They ask you um, if you where what they like ask there's, you. There's a survey on the way in, and the, one of the questions is "ye," and the correct answer is "haw." <laughs> you got to get that. That's important. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> they're like, ah, no. oh, they're either Albertan or Texan. It's close enough. It asks you what county you're in. And I know that because I went in to take the survey. Mm. Anyways. Oh, I took the survey. Maybe I took it early and they didn't have that question there. Yeah, they did ask what county. Just say Edmonton. <laughs> Calgary. Yeah. Uh, the next one is uh, is an article uh, for Alberta Views. It was written co-written uh, by Dr. Najma Ahmed and uh, Rod mm-hmm. Giltakta. They, they worked Interesting, together to, I... uh, to, to write this article. No, they didn't. <laughs> they kind of did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they kind of so, did, as in they, they, they um, wrote a position and then responded to each, each other's positions uh, in, yeah. in one of our article. Well, this was actually done a little while ago, and I'm surprised. Th- there was some, con- uh, not concern, there was some, hmm, I'm wondering if this is actually going to be, be put out. And they actually did put it out. So good on them for actually doing it. And it's great because you can actually share it, share it on your social media, share it everywhere. By the way, we're sharing this on our, our social media as well. Okay. So for those people who <clears throat> are on one side of the fence and when the other people are on the other side of the fence, read through it. And then you can actually make a, make a decision whether you're actually informed or not about your, your position. So good job, Rod Giltaka. Yeah, good job, Rod. Like it's a, uh, uh, like of Ahmed's uh, article. So our first position piece, uh, this is all like a story, <laughs> this like long bit right here. Uh, and there's a couple of things in here where she's, uh, uh, further spreading some uh, um, fake news, such as like the amount of guns that are reported stolen and that kind of stuff. Misinformation, I think, is the is the nice word. Misinformation is what she's spreading. Yes, uh, it's it's she doesn't have the actual facts. What she has, correct, is she has the facts that were again statistics and facts are based on who's making them and what you believe and what you want to pull from it. So uh, she doesn't have the correct information. She's spreading that. Well, she's been told that it's incorrect too. And she just continues to spread it. Like the, the uh, business about shootings and uh, guns that are seized and that kind of thing. It's like, Hey, you know, this includes pellet guns, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to keep using it because it sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I think the idea with this is that they both put out a position uh, piece and then uh, they got to, uh, do a response and uh, yeah I think that's I believe that's what happened and then Rod uh, uh, has a, a thorough evisceration which is something that the doctor is supposed to do but it's something that Rod's doing in this article is uh, eviscerating Ahmed's uh, piece with his response it's right. pretty good yeah. yeah so they take they both have their positions they present them and then they actually get a copy of um, so Rod was given a copy of uh, a meds and mm-hmm. vice versa. And then they got to actually counter it. And yeah, I, you know, what'd be really cool. What's that? If they did this on TV. Yeah. If they recorded it, because um, I think that's where a lot of this, like that's where you get a chance to, as soon as someone mentions <laughs> something that's, that's wrong and intentionally wrong, that's where you get a chance to say, Hey, uh, you've been saying this for a while and, and uh, I'd like to call you out on uh, spreading misinformation and, right. uh, and actually call them on it. And 
you know, hold their feet to a, to the fire a little bit. You can't really do that in an article. You can you can like point it out and say, you know, right. show how they're wrong, but uh, it's not uh, it's not quite as biting as like nailing someone in the moment. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Especially especially because if you're writing an article, you have the time to do the research, look through. Do you know what I mean? So. I thought it was funny that we had a, an article in Alberta Views from two people who are, are not Albertans. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of them are. But they but, got approached uh, by Alberta to do it. And uh, I have not seen a magazine do this kind of thing before. And it was really no. interesting. The The whole, like, we're going to balance out two viewpoints. We're going to give them a chance to respond to each other. Like, that's not typically, usually like with a, a newspaper article or something like that, or, or CBC News or something like that. They write sided. their position. They get yeah. a couple quotes that they want. They put it in and that's it. And they might include one dissenting in opinion just to, just to flavor it up a little bit. But it's almost never like equal airtime. And equal responses. You get you get to respond to the BS that your uh, opponent is is spreading, right? Yeah. Almost never. Like well, that. you actually mentioned it specifically that there's not generally equal airtime. Gen- like if you're looking at oh, no, whatever, it's the yeah. the pro gun side. There's nothing usually. So this is actually pretty good. Yeah. No, the CBC will will give free PR space time to. Uh, the space and time to the doctors yeah. um, without fail. They The yeah. CBC is their PR department. Right. And you know who the gun lobby, you know who supports them? Supports the gun lobby or supports? Yeah. Mm, because their PR department? YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong <Facebook>. answer. <laughs> you're supposed to say Parlor? Is it Parlor <laughs> now? <laughs> no, you're supposed to say. Oh, it's us? us. Oh, there's, those guys are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that doesn't make me feel confident at all. <laughs> it's the Empire Radio. And this is the CC Podcast. And, you know, Wild TV. And, yeah, anyways, uh, it's the Empire. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. We're grassroots. Real grassroots. More. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not talking about grass. All right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any roots. I don't know. Yeah. What to talk about. I died by roots. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am actually the host, aren't I? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> if there's someone yeah. in charge of moving this train wreck forward, it's you. Any other news? Nah. No. No. Okay. Uh, Let's go on and let's get into the new gun stuff. New gun stuff is sponsored by uh, Bolt Action Coffee. Slamfire Radio is now a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. Really, really good coffee. You guys should go and get some. Uh, the coffee is roasted in small batches and is quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. So get it sent to your home. Go to boltactioncoffee.com. Get the discount code Slamfire Radio. Tell them we sent you. All right. Good stuff, by the way. I still haven't had uh, the opportunity to have some in my 11th hour, but guess what? Girls Weekend. There's always time at Taking the 11th it. hour. Taking it, and I'm going to go and do the French press. We're going to we're classy. You're going to need <laughs> it after drinking all that box wine. Yeah. We're, I was just <laughs> said, we're classy. And I'm going, we, yeah, we're classy. We got the boxed wine. <laughs> There is there's worse uh, hangovers to have. Uh, tequila hangover is pretty bad, yeah. uh, but box wine hangover is uh, not forgiving. Even if you don't get drunk, it's still yeah. bad. It's still bad. And it's red wine too. So as opposed Ugh. to white, red wine will mm. kick, kick yeah. your butt. All right, uh, why don't we get into your gun stuff? Tell us all yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, let's do that. Um, Marstar. So Marstar got taken over by their their employees. Their employees are running yeah. the show now. And uh, they've been doing some interesting stuff. They're bringing in the TP9 uh, Sub Elite, which is uh, cool until you see like the barrels a little bit longer because we have to in Canada here. But uh, there's not really a lot of subcompact handguns in Canada. And this is a pretty cool looking one for a pretty uh, inexpensive price. They're $5.99. It is optics ready. uh, So if you want to, you can get uh, get a red dot on there as well. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty interesting little 9mm uh, subcompact pistol if you are into that kind of thing. Uh, the next one I have here is that FOC launched a new website, and they got some sales on there. Uh, Black Friday is coming up soon, so some places are opening early for their Black Friday sales. Uh, so FOC, firearmsoutlookcanada.com, 
uh, they have some uh, some stuff on sale as well. Their their website has always been good, and um, it's probably one of the better ones out there. So their old website wasn't that bad. I know. I was just saying that. Look at that. They have look at everybody on the bottom too. They're supporting. That's awesome. And their store, their store is like top, top, top of the line. Marble yeah. floors and yeah. <laughs> nice place. If you get a chance, go and see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this next one, this is more of like an announcement, but Gray Birch uh, said that their uh, foundation chassis is going to go, go on pre-sale right uh, soon. And mm-hmm. They're going to have some super special thing for the first hundred people who order. Ooh, we should get down on that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. It says we've there may t- be a nice little incentive for the first one hundred sold. Which... We uh, we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. It's kind of cool looking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, you got a shout out from them. Did you know that? Yes, on the Instagram, I saw it. Yeah. 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 For that article I wrote. Yep. Uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and then Cabela's has, uh, I'm not going to pull up this up on screen, but someone mentioned in on the Facebooks there, uh, that Cabela's Brian. has UMC 9mm 124 grain on sale for 12 oh. bucks a box. So 12 yeah. bucks per 50. That was Chris, Chris W. Which is pretty decent because uh, like a lot of, a lot of 9mm go back eight years or something like that. And I remember going into uh, wholesale sports at the time like 15 bucks was like a pretty good deal for like a per box pricing. It's just mm-hmm. gotten cheaper. Like since, since there's been a couple of scares in between, everyone's like cranked up their production and now uh, you're able to get nine millimeter for, for fairly decently priced. Speaking of scares in production, hmm, it'd be interesting. We really do need to get somebody on from the U S see what's going on. Well, I didn't put it in the news because it's American, but like Vista outdoors announced mm-hmm. that they have a, billion dollars in ammunition orders that they need to get to (laughs) they they don't have product for right now Mm. Mm. one billion (laughs) dollars of ammo so it's gonna take them a while to uh to resupply everyone that they resupply which is a lot they they have a lot of the ammunition business but uh uh we've been we've been telling people a couple of times ammunition is going to start getting pretty uh hard to get uh, hard to find here in uh, Al- in Canada, and uh, you were going to say Alberta, weren't you? Uh, that's really all I care about <laughs> in, in terms of Canada. So yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might, I might go and get some more hmm. must... ammo. Mm. Buy it by the thousand, and then you never like these dips happen. I, um, I shared out a uh, a chart recently. Where the hell did I? Sh- share that oh it'd be good if i could grab it it Discord? showed the the peaks and the, the cost of like nine millimeter and two two three and that kind of thing uh over, over time it yeah. never lasts more than a year like a shortage will only last a year so if you can there it is uh open original pop it over there share my screen sorry for the audio listeners i'll just have to describe this but uh it kind of descri- shows the ammunition price changes in the u.s uh, through some of the different panics and that kind of thing. So after that 2016 election, like ammo mm-hmm. got cheap, like really cheap, cheaper than it had been in uh, decades. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's well, obviously because you know everybody was suspecting Hillary, and they got Trump, who's pro gun, and everybody's going, oh, we're, we don't have to hoard. So the production ramped up prior to right. Well, so. and and production was. Um, production capacity was built up through like 2013 to 2016 yeah. all over there production was ramping up and uh once uh once the demand wasn't there the pro- put, production was able to who put this together i don't know i grabbed it from reddit and the reason why i ask who put it together is because you have some significant pieces that are listed on it like you got the sandy hook you got the uh mm-hmm. washington navy uh, yard shootings and is that why those people, prices went up? Yeah. Why the people are, the spiking isn't it? Is it because people were fearful that you know um, firearms would be quote unquote banned? Yeah. Well, Sandy Hook yeah. especially, people were yeah. worried that ARs would be banned. So that a lot of people bought ARs, a lot of people bought That's ammo true. for the ARs, and okay. uh, yeah, you see that in the the price of two two three. But like nine millimeter in twenty nineteen was like at, it hasn't been that cheap since like two thousand seven. 
Yeah. Like okay. decades cheaper. And like tw- a 22 LR, like I don't, th- I don't know if it's showing this correctly here. Maybe this is just like US Canada, uh, US pricing versus Canada. But like, that, I feel like pricing for 22 right now is cheaper than it's been since I was like a, a teenager. Because it's different in the in Canada, it's mm-hmm. cheap. It's cheaper for me to buy 22 here than go down to the U.S. and buy down in the U.S. Mm. and participate in anything. Uh, it's cheaper here. It's like when you start factoring in um, the uh, American exchange rate, especially like they're paying the same amount or more in American dollars. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, this peak is going to be this year, COVID. this year. And, uh, and yeah, this year coming up COVID, uh, Biden 2020 winning, election. Uh, all yeah, that kind of stuff. It's, it's going to be a peak for this year. And then 2021, it's going to go back down. It's just how how late into 2021. You might have to wait until like the summer before uh, capacity catches back up. Right. Also, you know, the zombies come out. True. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those COVID zombies. Yeah. Not CCI. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah. Brian? You mean it's not cheap? Mm. CCI is not that bad. Can't even you buy used to buy CCI. Case. Yeah. I don't know. I'm the, CC, the standard velocity I've got, I paid yeah. seven cents a round for, and I bought 3,000 rounds of it. Like, that's the way to go. You buy yeah. it by the thousand, and then yeah. it's like, oh, there's a panic. Well, I don't care. Like, I've, I've got tons of this stuff I'm sitting on. I'm fine. Right. He, he is right, though. There's certain brands like CCI um, that if, when, if you find it, buy it. And the same thing. Uh, I was on. I feel like their today? brand name has gotten better rec- like in, in the yeah. last decade or so. And that's that's become like the the brand to beat. Well, the brand so they, they have a nice mixture. Remember that Venn diagram I was talking about last week or we were talking about? You can have quality, mm-hmm. you you know, you could have reliability and you could have pricing. And they seem to be getting it together the most. Like it's not the best quality. And it's pretty reliable, and the price on it's not so bad. So they're out of everybody; they're the one that actually has been able to do that. So mm-hmm. I think that's that's what. And um, I was on the Aguila Facebook page today, and they were talking about they were asking what people were using, and then I started reading all the comments. Right, people were saying, "This is what I use. This is what I use. This is what I use," but I can't find it anywhere. Can't find it anywhere, and it's the same thing, right? Um, I can't find my I so I usually use Aguila, but I will go over to CCI now that I can't find Aguila. Basically, makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Well, speaking about twenty-two ammo, why don't we get into <laughs> our main topic of building a custom twenty-two ten twenty-two? Okay. Let's do I'm not, that. I'm not host, but I just I felt like that transition was so smooth. Well, that was a good perfect transition. For, yeah. So natural. You know what? There is this guy, and uh, he goes. His handle is the hunting gear guy, and he wrote this article. So we mm-hmm. thought we would actually talk about this because he's pretty knowledgeable, and um, he he he's somebody that I would actually refer to about building a 1022. And he's knowledgeable, also, or is like, did this guy just spend like four hours googling stuff and wrote it down? That's more accurate. <laughs> I just spent a lot of time Googling around and finding like all the places in Canada and where I could get it in the U.S. But that's a huge help for people. But not only that, you actually use these rifles on a regular basis. You know what works, what doesn't work. So I would go to you over a lot of other people here in Canada. Yeah. I think now people you've that know more about 1022s, but I'm getting there. I'm, I'm learning lots fast. You put together a list, a comprehensive list. I, uh, you put it out there. I shared it on the various platforms that I'm on because people people need to read it. So let's talk about let's talk about let's talk about building a 1022. Uh, no, Luke hmm? Adam, we're not using Thunderbolt. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I like that he knows it's a he put LMAO after it. Use try Thunderbolt LMAO. <laughs> Uh, oh so funny yeah okay so what are we talking about it you listed some stuff here so let's uh use cases so cases yeah 
What use you, cases. Mm-hmm. Oh, use cases. I'm going, okay. So you were, wrote down use, use cases. cases. So yeah, you've got to put your 1022 in a case. Going, <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah, you know what? You should probably put it in a case instead of having it rolling around soft the back Soft case, hard body. case. Yeah, soft, sock. Real socks, stockings. But, but no, you may use cases. Mm-hmm. So how do, what is it used for? So why don't you just write down what is it used for? Uses. I'm being fancy. I'm using gun jargon. You're in the gun industry too. <laughs> Anyways, so this is a 1022. What types of things can you use it for? So we're we going. Uh, uh, that one's only for hunting. Yes. Because it's okay. got camo on it. Well, that's right. I actually brought out three different 1022s because you, you said you got any 1022s. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, so I went and brought a, a couple of them. I brought out the one that. So I brought out this one, and this is the one that I bought off of Trevor. Um, a year or two ago it's uh, got the camo and it's got the Cerakote and then I also brought out this one and this one here is I think it's from 1979 or so and it is older than the trees and it's got the push button oh it's got that flush fit mag release yeah. thing oh I hate those so, so much but I brought it out because it's different and then I also brought out this one, but this one is actually very much like yours as well. So this is the one that has the Great Birch Solutions stuff and everything like that. So I brought them all out and we'll pick them apart but as we go through this. But um, we should probably look at specifically what people use 1022s for. Why a 1022? Adriel? Blinking, why are, like for, as a first gun, okay, yeah. someone just got a pal yeah. and they're like, what should I get? What I uh, twenty two twenty two LR easy. What what tw- what twenty two? Uh, do you want something that you can like enhance and add to and like tinker with and like just always use uh, a Ruger ten twenty two? The platform is more expensive. Yes. Than all the other semi automatic twenty twos, uh, all the other common ones, right? Like the right. the Marlin seven ninety five, the Remington five nine seven. Like it's more expensive than all of those. More expensive, but more hardy and more reliable. I do think it is a little bit more reliable there's other pieces i think the it factory is factory one mm, mm. they always like start to fa- like they start to fail uh if they're not lubed and kept cl- like uh, the the reliability isn't great if they get dirty that's correct yeah right. um but as I, like a as a platform fantastic it's fantastic you can yeah. take as i said the one that i have here with the gray birch like the only original part, and therefore it's not original, is the bolt. Speaking of which, Great Birch Solutions has their bolts out. Oh, do they? Yeah, they just posted it. So I want to go and get one of those. Okay, that being said, um, uh, yeah, it's a great platform. You can actually change everything up. It's like the ARs of the 22LR, right? It, there's so much aftermarket parts. You can actually go out and you can tr- you can fine-tune it. So, And use cases... Uh, so plinking target, uh, you can take it to shoot, for example, like your three gun match. You had people that were using uh, 22 LR, right? Mm-hmm. 1022 would be fine. Yep. Uh, y- you could actually use it at an ORPS match, a CRPS match, and obviously at a maple seed as well. So it's great. And it's great for a small game. Like you can u- use it to shoot squirrels, rabbits, what have you. Other small stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gophers, gophers, Fantastic and obviously, gophers. and obviously with the with it because it's a twenty two semi automatic. You can follow up shots are are good. Uh, also good for ORPS, CRPS, any of those competitions. Did Didn't you I just those? say that? Yes. I have like attention deficit <laughs> you're disorder. Not li- you're not listening to that. me. No. Okay, Trevor. Right. <laughs> 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 also right. good for those things um yeah. but yeah uh, uh the, uh did you mention action shooting i did not so race mm. guns as well mm-hmm. so yeah I'd... grimfire race guns uh steel challenge yep. uh that kind oh, of thing oh it's great for steel challenge actually yeah. that's this uh, is ideal for yeah. steel challenge here it's a yep. uh, uh short barrel uh red dot uh, so why a short barrel? Well, there's just less inertia to move yep, side swing. to side. So 
uh, that's good for it. Uh, and then that, that red dot, because it's right on the receiver and there's no rail or anything there, that red dot is a little bit lower than you could typically get. Yep. Um, even, the, even with that, I still put on the, the higher cheek, peak, cheek crease on here. This is not like the one it comes with. It's uh, not the highest one, the second highest one. Really? Yeah. I oh, you know, that. yeah, I'm sorry, because it's a red dot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, and the reason is why, I already know the reason why, but you want to tell people, and I have to go let them a dog just to To get a proper cheek rest so you can see through the red dot. Correct. That's why, yeah. Just bring it up to your cheek and just drop it on, and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so those are use cases. In terms of stocks, I just want to pull out uh, a factory. Now, you might have a wood stock, um, but this... Actually, I got a Woodstock one here too. Uh, the synthetic Ruger stock is uh, is a real piece of crap, uh, and they're, they're a piece of crap for a couple reasons. One, I've got this like extreme cup here for yep. no particular reason. Like, this isn't a machine gun; it's not going to slip around on you. So who cares? And then they also like drop quite a bit off. I find even with iron sights, this is too low. My I can't like if I put my face on this guy. I'm looking at the back of the receiver. I'm even looking close to the iron sights. So You're right. I think it's for like people with fat heads or something. Like they're 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 designing this for the person with the fattest head to shoot irons. Uh, so the factory stock is uh, is not great. At least it's free float, right? Is it? Yep. No, but they have a barrel band on them. That's correct. You can take it off. You don't need the yep. barrel band on there. Which I just about did. I just tightened it though. Yeah, and then. Uh, I also got some wood ones. Now, one one thing you could do to improve the uh, stock to get that cheek weld is uh, pop on one of these Kdex uh, uh, cheek pieces, right. adjustable ones. That'll work. Did you I'll make that? You. Hmm? Did you make that? Or uh, this one's Rick's, but I am making a... Well, my, my buddy Will is making a pile of these for me. I'm, uh, I gave him some sheets, and he's going to cut a bunch. Um... Or so that's all. That's all, those are a bunch of like crappy options. If you're gonna throw some money at it, uh, you get the Magpul X22 stock, and you get like a cheek rest that's that's appropriate on here. I've got the highest one on here. I know you said don't use the highest one, but that's what I need. To, uh, Why did I say that? I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, I I I have the highest one on mine. <laughs> highest one. And I'm, highest I, one. It's still, it's still like I can still squish past it if I really want to. Yeah, uh, your move up your uh, your move up your mic because every time you bring it up. Oh, I'm I'm hitting it. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So. so mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have the highest one on there. You need it because you have the rings and also the scope. I had somebody recently who had the exact same makeup on it, but her rings were or their rings were were quite a bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, and even with the highest cheek riser, she still had to. Add, add more foam yeah and so it just looked um, yeah well and, and like you can't put the scope too low because if you do that this uh, hit the on the ring rail. at the back here will hit the rail uh so that is a, a limiting factor at the back there um and and one reason why i, I couldn't really go with much lower rings on this thing anyways yeah um, i have <laughs> yeah i have a set of lows even though yeah it, it still works I've got mediums, but I've but like these rings are also the canted ones. So I've got like ten degrees there, and then the rail is twenty. So I'm getting a, I'm getting a bit of cant out of this thing. Okay, yeah, but that's actually because you're you're going to be using it for longer distances, and that's what you I want. I might as well. as well be. If I'm going to chuck right. a big bad scope on it, I might as well make it for a, something that'll do long range. Right. Yeah. So we have some questions that are popping up. Do you want to actually cover them as we go, or do you want to actually just go over this and then cover the questions at the end? Let's let's cover it as we go. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so William Saunders, he says, are the breakdowns or the take? It'd be a, talk, a takedown ten twenty two just as accurate, or and or uh, to return to zero. So basically, do you need to return to zero every time that you actually put them back together again? So, um, do you want to? I, so I've seen takedowns that are really good. Uh, I've also seen takedowns that are basically suck. <laughs> but a lot of it has to do with locking the barrel too, uh, barrel nut 
it came loose and also also where you mount your scope as well some um, and where you have your sling swivels because if you're doing maple yeah. seed the factory ones for the takedown takedown 20 10 22 are like right there yeah and that won't uh, put any torque on the barrel uh, but if you have them up here somewhere and you torque on it uh, pressure on the sling will throw your shots quite a bit yeah quite a bit yeah they're the they're light, as we were talking about. Um, I don't know if you actually, William, if you were listening at the beginning to, there is a, a takedown that was um, the Calgary Shooting Center has on sale. Um, they're really super light and great for putting in a backpack. It's not something that I would be using for competition or anything like that. It, just because of the chances of things loosening, just because of the chance of uh, your scope um, coming off as well. I've seen several scopes come off of it during a competition. So mm. it's just from taking things apart, putting them back together. But if you can just, if you do actually get one, just make sure that you're putting everything on and making sure that Loctite's on with it. And then also actually making sure that the, uh, the, um, barrel nuts nice and tight as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Those are all important with, uh, with the takedowns. Yeah. And with the regular ones, the regular ones, you do need Loctite. You need to Loctite that base down to the receiver, and you probably want to Loctite your rings on there as well. Yeah. So that's one of the things that, um, one of the biggest things that we talk about when people are preparing to come to a shoot is make sure that everything is tight. Because if not, um, especially the tension screw, which is on the bottom of, you want to show them where the tension screw is? So for the... Uh, Right and there. Your stock, that's that's right? your action screw right there. Right. That actually comes loose quite a bit, and uh, that will actually affect your accuracy as well. So make sure that that's nice and tight, and then also your any, your scope rings are nice and tight too. But well, Ideally, you want to use like a torque wrench on there because yep. changing the torque on this guy will change what happens with your accuracy. And mm. with your scope, if you torque them on too much, uh, yep. you'll pinch the tube, and and the erector won't adjust properly. Uh, and if it's too loose, the it'll they'll loosen it off, and you'll go your scope yep. will start moving. I don't know what your experience was this year. My experience this year was two scopes shooting loose on average out of like ten, twelve competitors. Every maple seed, two, two um, scopes or bases would would go loose. Typically, uh, so with ten to fifteen, typically we'll see about two. Two mm -hmm. people per, and some some events we were having one, some of them we were having three, some of them we were having two. So yeah. it's usually one or at least one. So we'll come along. I'll bring up my Wheeler Torque Wrench, and we'll go along the line, especially a little bit later to, later into a shoot because we've already put several hundred rounds downrange, and that's when things are starting to loosen up. And that's when it happens, and it's always like super visible. One of the MQTs, it's like, you're prone, and uh, earlier yeah. you were doing this, and now it's like that. Yeah. And then you go like this, and it's like <laughs> rattling around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, yeah. I actually saw one guy on the line, and um, one guy on the line, he had a takedown, and his scope, literally, he was shooting it, and the scope fell off. <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> <laughs> I said scope's a little loose. <laughs> yeah, or or it's it's not as a big of a risk with the ten twenty twos because they have a, a pick rail on the back, but the ones that use like dovetail rails, like, like other twenty ten twenty twos, those shoot and they slide back on the dovetail. Yeah. Yeah. So Brian Rance is saying that ten twenty two sporter versions don't have barrel bands. I don't know why they uh, float the barrels though. Um, don't know if they float the barrels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can choose to or choose not to. Like the uh, the Magpul X22 stock, uh, you can choose not to, or you can choose to use these guys here. Mm -hmm. uh, and what these guys do is not float the barrel. These actually put tension right about there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they will jack your barrel up or down. Now that might help with um, something called uh, barrel droop. Yep. So uh, if your barrel to receiver fit is kind of loose uh, or if you torque your V-block down too much, the barrel will actually droop Up. down compared to the oh. receiver. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because of the V-blocks on the bottom, right? So it'll yep. droop down. And uh, what happens then is that uh, you might not be able to get your scope on because the scope is drooping so far down. That's true. Um, 
It also hap- happens with, uh, with he- really heavy barrels that, again, don't have a very good fit in the receiver, or maybe the receiver is just too soft and, and it's bending. Uh, so that, uh, that can cause issues. I haven't opted to, uh, to use that, uh, shim, the barrel shim, uh, on, on this guy here. Um, kind of curious about it though. Curious, a little bit curious about it. Do you have drippy shims or uh, drippy barrels? <laughs> drippy barrels. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't only, used one. uh, only after too much whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used one. I haven't yeah. used one. So, I don't, yeah. I, I'm not sure if they're necessary. No, I'm not sure either. I don't really like. I don't really like. I like the sporter versions better. I don't really like the bands. The bands are pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. If you, to be truthful, um, but anyways. Yeah, other stocks. Uh, there's a Hogue stock that's pretty decent. Uh, yeah, it's I, it's it's a decent, cheap stock. Nice. It has. It's got the rubber on it. Obviously, it's Hogue. Um, They're decently stiff. You can yeah. run a uh, you can run a thicker barrel in them, yep. like with these uh, with these factory Ruger ones. If you look at the barrel channel there, like this, the, I think the factory barrel profile is seven fifty or something like that. But it's it's very tight to the barrel. You couldn't fit like a, a larger barrel in there. Whereas um, like the the Hogue, you'll be able to fit like a point nine two zero barrel. Same thing with these X twenty twos. You'll be able to fit those as well. Yes. So the X twenty two has both the pencil barrel or the bull barrel you can actually it has like a shelf almost and yeah this channel it. inside yeah. you can choose which one you want to run you can just yeah. flip it around now the thing like i had to do it with these ones um i had to put uh shimming inside here to uh stiffen up the receiver to stock fit uh, i did i may in the future bed these i may glass bed the actions to the stock yeah to really I, like get her in there and not moving because i yeah. don't like the idea of what i did for the for the shimming yeah so um, you actually so t- do you want to tell everybody what you did because this was a suggestion by somebody else that uh yeah yeah um i actually put just underneath this spot right here so if you were to take this trigger take the trigger off no like rotate it out of there uh yeah. it, it kind of it kind of like cams in and grabs uh uh in there and I put aluminum tape under one part of it to uh, to get it to go in there more firmly and not move, because otherwise I could push down the barrel and the whole receiver was moving inside the the stock. Yeah, and I don't know why, because we have the exact same outfit. Mine doesn't do that. I blame the the stock because I tried it with some other receivers and it did the same thing. Some other receiver trigger combos, same thing. But yeah. I have the exact same stock. Mm-hmm. So. so I still blame the stock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, receivers. So the standard 1022 receiver looks like this. It's made of aluminum. It's got uh, like a paint on it to uh, to keep it looking black. <laughs> or flat dark earth, or whatever. or flat dark earth. And you got a stainless one there, right? Yeah. Uh, I did. I don't anymore. My, I have a stainless one as well, um, but I'm not sure if the receiver is actually stainless. It might just be like uh, in the white aluminum. It might not actually be stainless. I don't know. I, have, sure. I haven't uh, I haven't taken a look. But uh, aluminum receiver um, with some of these, uh, the like you need to lock tight your screws in. Law moral yeah, of the story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you're screwing into aluminum and uh, it'll loosen up after a while. Yep. So just to back up just a bit, mm-hmm. Chris W is talking about the MDT or the Oryx and for um, a stock. And if you're looking at actually changing one out and having something that's very adjustable that can fit you, that's a good option. Or the um, Grey Birch Foundation. <laughs> like there, right. there's, a, there's a couple different like plastic stocks. Like the X22 is a good solid plastic stock. Yeah. There's a couple of other ones uh, that are popular out there. The Archangel uh, stocks. Yes. Uh, there's some that make the 1022 look like different guns. Like there's one that makes it look like an M1 carbine. Uh, that'll really annoy some American listeners who'll say like carbine. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it, looks, it looks like the M1 carbine and. Uh, and there's some other ones that like. There's one that makes there's, it look like a K36 and like all this sort of kind of stuff. The ATI uh, is mm-hmm. yeah that is almost like the clamshell. It's plastic. Um, it um, by the way, don't get it. 
don't get it. Because if you got to clean your rifle, you got to take it all apart, take the scope off. It's a pain in the caboose. Mm -hmm. Just saying, just don't get it. Get something yeah. else. And then there's a bunch of aluminum chassis that you can get for them that are real fancy. Most of the aluminum chassis are like $300 up. Uh, but typically what those aluminum chassis are giving you is you can run like an AR style hand grip. Yep. You can, some of them will allow you to run a buffer tube and an AR stock. Um, and a lot of those ones also have like aluminum four ends that are all kind of unitized, uh, parts of it as well. Great. And they're great for people actually using them for trainers, whatever. PRS um, trainers. PRS. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And as uh, Chris was talking about, go to, uh, MDT. If you're looking for something that's a little higher end, go to MDT. They run their 1022 stock under their Oryx brand. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Oryx. Yeah. yeah. MVP yeah. Oryx. Yeah. It's a different brand that they run it under. I'm not sure what the, what the difference is, but that's anyways, that's, that's where that one is. And there's yeah. a couple of other uh, al aluminum chassis uh, options. I recorded a whole bunch of them on that, uh, on that article that I've got on my website, a whole bunch of them, all so the options, all the options you had. There's quite a few of them there. Are you going to actually post this with the link over to your website? So that yeah, sure. you actually, yeah. yeah, right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, receivers, you want to talk a little bit more about those? I'm just going to put you on hold for a second. Yeah. So the dog um, there's a couple of other options. There's uh, other aluminum ones. There's other uh, stainless steel ones. The stainless steel ones are quite expensive. Um, but then the other things to look for would be like something with a built-in rail or not a built-in rail. Uh, something with a rail. Like uh, quite frank, uh, uh, frequently with 1022s, you run out of rail space at the front yep. uh, because you want to move your scope forward. So look for something that's got a rail that's canted or not canted, cantilevered. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that moves just a little bit forward of the uh, of the receiver there, just so you can get like an extra inch or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Let's talk the back of the bus because we're talking rails and different things like that. So what we typically see is back like of the train on the rail then. Okay. And there you go. Right. So we'll see. Uh, so you got this. It's already pre-drilled. Disgusting. Right. Don't do that. Don't. Don't Round mount. top. Don't mount, don't mount your scope there. Go out and get a rail and then mount your scope and move it forward on the rifle because we'll see we'll see people actually just mounting their scope straight on top where those holes are and then they actually don't get a good fit on the rifle so oh, interesting i didn't even know that was an option all yeah. i've ever seen was uh uh were the rails that people put on them because yeah, those are just no, so common to put on no i've seen people actually just mounting scopes and i'm just going what the fuck i mean oh my oh you. my god yeah that's so <laughs> far back that rear one oh my god no yeah <laughs> So go out and uh, actually buy a rail and get an extended rail and then take take that scope and where you think you're going to mount it, move it forward about an inch to an inch and a half. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, they do need to be quite far forward on uh, on the 1022s to get proper eye relief and and, and whatnot. If, if you turkey turkey neck it, right? Here, yeah. I'll, use, I'll, I'll, I'll go lefty just so I don't hit. But like, yeah. If, if your head's up there and it's up up over here, you need that scope to have your three or four inches, right? Right. Yeah. So the Gray Birch Solutions, I think it's actually really, um, it, I love how it's integrated into the receiver, mm -hmm. uh, the Picatinny rail already. Um, but one of the feedback that I have for them is you need at least another inch on it going over the barrel. So. Yeah. Just to get like a, a, a nice turkey turkey neck on that thing. Well, just to, when we talk about turkey neck, what, why do we talk about that? Because you don't want to be like crunched at the back and just be like, eh, and like crunching your neck back. It's like not comfortable, not consistent. Got to be further forward on those things. Right. Yeah, just to, for, to, to get a proper fit. Forward. Yeah. It's a proper fit. Somebody was talking about the Bagara. So the Bagara stock is actually a really good option. It, and again, it has all of the kind of the upgrades for the 1022, right? It, it comes on the rifle already, so. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. um, I don't know if it's, it, it's very stiff. I, I, I must use fiberglass. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, it's really nice as well. Um, yeah, the integrated, like integrated rail, after seeing so many uh, bases shoot loose at maple seed, I really like the idea of an integrated rail because those things don't, they don't fall off. They're, no, they're, they don't. In, they're in the receiver. They can't yeah. fall off. 
And if you're going to make one that doesn't come off and is always on there, you might as well get one that's got like 20 MOA in there. Because why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> because you know what? It's great to shoot a little shorter distance, but you're going to want to take that out and just stretch the legs on that puppy, right? Uh, if you're going to get a fancy barrel, it's like, wow. Like, I, you I, might as well. I shoot a hole at 25. Yeah, great. What if I shot it at 200? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. 300. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all we got to say about receivers. Barrels. Barrels, 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 barrels. Yeah. You know, um, are... one of the things I'm going to do the next time I'm out at the range is I'm mm-hmm. going to shoot the factory Ruger barrel and see what kind of accuracy you get out of that guy. And then I'm going to compare it to a stiffer, thicker barrel like this guy right here. Right. This is kind of a jump up, though. Yeah. That's like Toyota Tercel <laughs> and then like Ferrari. Like yeah. say, the, we didn't, this isn't even like a, a, okay. a jump up that makes sense because like you could go get like a, a green mountain barrel and chuck that on or like a right. Delask barrel and that's like a real right. reasonable small upgrade that you would make before well, you go to the carbon wrapped <laughs> fancy well, little barrel, right? Yeah, Delask did have a carbon wrap barrel as well. Delask? Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so, but you, there's several options out there. There's the Great Birch Solutions, which is, as you said, the carbon wrap um, barrel. Uh, there's also IBI here in Canada mm-hmm. as well. That's, they're doing um, uh, barrels for the 1022 as well. Great barrel. It's a little bit more expensive. However, it's going to give you the accuracy, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. They're, a little bit. They're up there. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. uh I'm impressed. I'm super impressed with the barrel that um, Grey Birch has actually um, put out as well. The accuracy on it is super good. Mm-hmm. Um, more that's being shot, the better it's just actually the better it's getting. So Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the surprising things is that this one's carbon fiber wrapped. Some of the aluminum shrouded ones are even lighter. Hmm. Like the, the tactical solutions, Taxol. Yeah. That was like, I was real de- really debating between like, do I get the gray birch one or the tactical solutions one? Cause the tactical solutions one had, you know, a hundred or 200 grams lighter or something like that. But I was looking online and I, I saw a couple of things where, um, the particular one I was looking at, um, I had some, there were some people complaining about the accuracy on them and they're saying, well, of course, like rather than an aluminum shrouded one, the, the big thick, like nine, uh, point nine inch steel barrels are more accurate than that one but i think that's kind of obvious that it, the big heavy thick pure steel barrel would would be stiffer and, and more accurate yeah and that's where ibi comes in yeah because theirs is a big thick steel steel, steel barrel. barrel they have a carbon fiber wrapped one too ibi does do they yep okay yep. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people actually have been not, um, that I know uh, that are in, you know, our circle, our bubble, whatever. Uh, they've been looking at uh, the various options out there and some have gone with IBI, some have gone with Great Birch Solutions, and I have not heard anything bad about either of them. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to that, there was, as you said, Delas that was available. Um, great. There's Volkwartz in uh, too, like yeah. um, out in uh, Bonneville, like there's a shop there that, that brings in Volkwartz and stuff. They a bunch of full quartz and barrels. Cool. Um, I haven't seen like the, there, there's some uh, ER Shaw sells 1022 barrels in the states for pretty reasonably prices, like uh, 215 US at the top, like 100 to 200 US. I haven't seen them in Canada though. Can they, do they ship? I don't know. It's well, a barrel though. <laughs> barrels. I think, I'm pretty sure barrels. Well, I'm saying like I'd, I'd love to find some of those in yeah. Canada because they seem like a super reasonably priced, uh, decent quality barrel you can get in the US, but. No such luck here in Canada. No. We have American listeners too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess Delask is a, is a pretty reasonable price range as well for their yeah. stuff. Yeah. W- so let's be honest. So for 1022, that was your go-to market prior to some of the other people coming out with uh, with parts as well. So if you needed 1022 parts and um, you'd, you, could, you could go shopping at Delask. You, they're available at you know other retailers and not too, but let's be real. That's where you. Know they sell it. stuff on Brownells, Delask and I uh, IBI. Like I was, I was on Brownells. I'm like, oh look, Canadian manufacturer. Oh look, another Canadian manufacturer. It's like, oh, weird. 
so more and more and uh, more and more companies from Canada are, are selling their stuff through that. I, mm-hmm. I, I've been looking at some of the, uh, the other companies again, like Great Birch Solutions. They're yeah. posting stuff for the European market. They were sending mm-hmm. out also the American market and yeah, IBI uh, Ryan's been talking about uh, going down to the U S uh, Maple Ridge Armories. It's not 1022s, but Maple Ridge Armories was talking about that. They're diversifying a lot of mm-hmm. Canadian, a lot of Canadian manufacturers are having to diversify basically. So go down to the U S yeah. right. Well, and a lot of people like had a bunch of money in their, in their ARs and right. uh, they're looking for something else to, uh, another gun Barbie to dress up like the, one of the other gun, gun Barbies Barbie. that's, that's great for that. Like dress her out for the ball, like 1022. Fantastic for that kind of stuff. Ooh, Set it up power, which we want to take it to the, we're taking her uh, to the dance. We're going to get our pictures done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tactical solutions barrels. Uh, Want stalls had a bunch of that stuff. They had a bunch of tac- tactical solutions uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, Mike, one of our listeners, has a fancy Taxol uh, uh, setup. Oh, was it was his receiver that was like that? Well, he's listening. There's a so there's a tax there's a Taxol receiver that allows for left side charging, which um, I really like because I think charging handles on the right hand side is dumb. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's some there's some definitely some some fancy stuff out there. Uh, yes, yes, there is. Mm-hmm. So Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can actually. So remember when you started out saying that the 1022 is a little bit more expensive. You know, the stock 1022 is a little bit more expensive and all that. Yeah, like Um, 350, uh, 450 for like a bone stock, like not even that accurate. 22 Uh, rifle, and then you can actually get to the point where you can basically a couple thousand dollars even a little bit more than that on just your, like the one that I currently have on my table right here is, I think that it's about $3,000 worth of parts on it. Right. So like, you know, it's up there that you can get pretty fancy guns uh, for just a 22. Mm -hmm. What do you got for, uh, for triggers? Like I've got, just hold on a second. Yep. Dogs. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. So, like, in terms of triggers, uh, the factory one is right around five point five pounds. And I forgot which one I put my Volcorts and hammer in, but I'll find out soon enough here because its trigger won't be five point five pounds. It'll be a lot lighter. Uh, but the uh, yeah, the standard one's right around five point five. Yeah. Uh, you put the Volcorts and hammer in, you get it down to right around three, and then you get a BX trigger, and that'll take it to uh. 2.5 or you get that kid you've got a kid on your one of yours right nope mine is a timmy so i paid uh for my timmy trigger i paid uh 300 plus i got a discount on it though so I'm playing with the, the factory trigger right here and it's a little heavy. And so uh, that is one of the things that, uh, so I loan out my rifle and when I loan it out, I do tell people that the uh, trigger poundage on it is quite a bit different than a regular stock. So it's, I think it's one and a half pounds and no take up whatsoever on it. So you get, you get a, a much lighter trigger pull if you, if you, uh, Press the safety off. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> helps a lot. Uh, that one's three and a half, so that must be the one with the Volkerts and Hammer in it. So, uh, if people want a quick upgrade, do the Volkerts and Hammer, see your change out, and then after that, put in a trigger pack. So, yes. BX. The, the BX, BX. I don't think the BX is a big enough upgrade. So, like, I have two BXs. Right. Uh, the Volkerts and Hammer though does a fantastic job of like cutting the the trigger pull weight on it. I I got a fantastic deal on my BX triggers. If if I hadn't gotten such a fantastic deal on them, oh, the yeah. Volkerts and Hammer, yeah. because the the BX the BX trigger packs are right now in Canada one forty one thirty five somewhere around right. there. But it doesn't and, come, and as you said, it doesn't come with the Autobolt release, and mm-hmm. like you need to get that anyways. By the way, they're seventeen ninety nine from Delask. Uh, they went up in price five bucks, um, and they have them in stock. Just to let you know. So uh, I'll do you one better. Um, Bonneville's uh, Sylvester's Source for Sports. They yep. sell you the Volkortsen Hammer and Auto Bolt release and some springs and whatnot for forty-five bucks. 
that's the one there. to get. Yeah. yeah, because the ha the hammer by itself but you have to change uh, and springs. It. I was just going to say, you, no, you can't just do the hammer, though. You do have to do the sear. You have to do both of them. Yes, the hammer, the uh, sear. They had that trigger, the reset as well. I don't know if I mentioned yeah. it on the show before, but uh, uh, the, the reset spring is like back here. I needed to go back to the factory one because it wasn't resetting properly. It was like holding up. Oh, it was uh, catching? Yeah, it just didn't I have enough power to push all yeah. the way forward. So I needed to uh, I needed to go back to the factory reset spring. Um, but other than that, it was uh, it was a it, it's a really good upgrade for forty five bucks, and you get that bolt release, so you don't have to like Dremel the hell out of it. But I like Dremeling the hell out of them. <laughs> like that's a very easy thing to do. Just yeah, rah, it it's, it's it's a minute maybe of uh, of work, and right. uh, and off you go. So you um. So we're talking about the kits. Do that. You can do the BX trigger, but if you actually don't get the bother. other pieces, don't save bother. up. Save up for the uh, Timney or the VQ two thousand or the CMC yeah. or any of the other uh, trigger packs. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and I say that after owning BX. Like uh, I, I have no problem saying that. Um, there's a couple of other like little ergonomics things, and I've got I got some real interesting ones here to show. Um, oh, just before we go, um, mm -hmm. so a couple of things. Gunworks just released a Bolt 22, $9,000 US. No, thank you. That's because it's Gunworks. Yeah. And then also, uh, Ryan actually wants to know what the reset is like on the aftermarket triggers. Um, fantastic. Well, the reset on the BX is... Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it over to speaker view, and we'll take a look at that. So, oh, right here, there's the trigger press. I hold, pull it back. There it is. Yeah, that's the same as mine as well. Yeah, it's not. Very, I, very, it's not like very. the best. It's not like my AR. Right. Very short. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it. Yeah. It's not the best. It's. Better than my Glock. <laughs> Much better than my Glock. Better, um, better, better than a factory. Is it? Yeah. I'm just actually, <laughs> let me play. Just hold on a second. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try mine while you're doing that. Uh, you know what? Oh my God, it's so heavy. I know. <laughs> just the. You know what? It's not. It's, uh, not the factory one's pretty bad. The factory one's pretty bad on the on the way up. It's like there's a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of movement, a lot of like jerky movement as well on the on the way up. Yeah, the BX one was better than Sitting that. Sitting here playing with all of them on my. Yeah, so yep. it is better. It's not great, but it's better. And you tested your Timney, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, as you were actually testing yours, I was playing with mine too. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I talk charging handles now? Yeah, sure. Why charging not? Charging handles. Yeah. Yeah. So, like the uh, the factory Ruger charging handle, if you if you look there, it doesn't really stick out. Like it's it's flush in with my scope caps, and because of where you mount your scope, that's going to be where it, where it is, kind of a thing. So it's not it's not the easiest thing to grab onto. Uh, they're, they're a bit short. They don't stick out a whole heck of a lot. I got a couple oh. options here. I'll show the most ridiculous one first because you can see, like easily see the difference <laughs> in how far it's they huge. stick out. It's huge. That's this is a, said. that's the, the power custom yeah. and, uh, it's sticking out like way past the scope cap there. So you can see that it's very easy to, uh, to grab Rob. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite uh, quick to grab onto. And uh, and pull back uh, some of the other options. This one here is the Delask one. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's a, like Kid also made some of these as well, or maybe Delask yeah. makes them for Kid. I don't know. Like they have some sort of relationship going on because they put a lot of Kid parts in with their parts and whatnot. So just before you go a little further, I'm I've heard that they're actually getting out some of the Kid parts. Remember, I said originally it was ten twenty twos they were getting out of. But yeah. the feedback has been that it's actually the kid pieces that they're oh. getting out of. So, anyways, hmm. but they also make like on yours. It, the the um, the bolt is a different color. Uh, bolt handle charging. Yeah, handle I've got the color. I got the CNC bolt and, on there. Yeah, yeah, that's and the the last one. Yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. 
this one sticks out a little bit more. It's still not like a ton, but a little bit. And it's it's also quite aggressive, uh, the, the checkering on there. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got this guy as well. Uh, I didn't go with a long one because this is like a slick side anyways. There's Where'd no, you get that no one? Scope. Uh, brown Okay. This is so a nice one. The... This is like a nice stainless one. Uh, oh. The rod that it, this, this one came with a captured recoil spring. Some oh, of them okay. aren't captured. And yeah. if they're not captured, that means that like putting them back in is kind of a pain in the butt because you got to put them back in and compress the, sc- the spring with the charging handle at the same time. Yep. And because it's like a, because it's an offset charging handle on these things and, and uh, guide rod, uh, they don't uh, go in nice and smooth. You can see that rod there is, is kind of at an yeah. angle. Uh, you have you have to hold your tongue a certain way <laughs> as you're putting it in and dropping in the bowl, <laughs> and you have to actually lift up one leg. No, it's not like that. But you do have to to put everything back together. You do have to have a dexterity, basically. Yeah, you have to um, you have to pre pull this guy back by pushing that in from the correct. middle. And then right. hold it there and then get the and bolt and be like, bolt. please yeah. bolt, get on there and get on that charging handle. And once you get it on, you're good. But that's correct. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt. Anyways, yeah, that's but, all my charging handles. Okay. So you said that you got the one from Brownells. How much did it cost? The charging handle? Yeah. Well, there were 30 US, somewhere around oh. there. That yeah. the last one was 45 Canadian. But that one came with three different recoil springs, like a, a light. 2D like subsonic uh, standard and a, hi- a high velocity spring. So if oh. you only ever shot high velocity, you don't have to get something that's like going to batter your uh, bolt buffer. Yeah. Uh, you could get something that's a little bit lighter or heavier. Hey, or whatever. did Just you have that? Did you have that on there? Do you have bolts and bolt buffers? I don't have bolts and bolt buffers. I didn't like put the small stuff. I mean, like the mag releases, I didn't put on there either. But no, no, I did. I did put that on there. Yeah. So that's yep. one of the things that I suggest people do is uh, right from the get go get your get your stock. Um, uh, once you buy your ten twenty two, go and get uh, one of the silicone buffer pens. Put that in as opposed to the other buffer pens for your bolt. And what else? I, put, I, I got a couple kid ones. They're a real pain in the ass. They got like a steel pin with like a a, a rubber sleeve that goes around it. And you got to put the rubber sleeve in there first and like wiggle it. Why the, it's a why real the hell, pain why the hell are you there. doing that? Just go get a silicone one. I should, hey. Or yeah. something that's not such a pain in the ass to put in there. Anyways, it's a uh, kid. I thought it was if the you, best. If, you, if you're, if you're going to be running it a lot, which I do, I just switch it out and put in the, the silicone ones. Hmm. Again, they're five ninety nine. dollars They'll ask. You're welcome. Oh, they didn't have them when I was ordering. That's why I got the kid ones. <laughs> with the steel pin. <laughs> And the fanciness and whatnot. Um, right. Yeah. I Tougher mean this buffer. Yeah. Buffer. Yeah. Buffer pin. Um, and then the mag release. So you showed you showed your old one there that had that push button one. Yeah. That's those a little are, in the trees. Those are I real ha- finicky. So uh, if you're doing a... So mag, the mags for the 1022s anyways, they're, they're not great when you're inserting them. You have to have them a certain way and yet they're... But one of the good things about them is they're flush, but this one here is the old style. So for the mag release, it's a push button. So you have to just push up and then let gravity work its magic. Now, if it gets stuck in there, good luck. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, and then what do you got on yours there? Let's have a look. Is it this style here with the, this the small push button? I so got the rid ne- of all those because brown else six ninety nine. So I just got all this style. So the next evolution is this little one here, a small button here. Um, well, a little bit better, but still not the best. And you can then you rest got, it on anything. You no. rest that, you rest that on a on a bag or something like right. that. If uh, like let's say you're shooting, um, actually Charlie Charlie mentioned that. Uh, if you if you shoot one of those at like an ORPS or something like that, and you put it on a barrier, it might drop your mag out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, one of the good companies that is here in Canada, but they're no longer actually ma- are uh, they don't have any in stock actually or the matador uh, matador i was trying to get uh so they did um uh, machined aluminum um mag releases and really good ones they have they're the paddle that so you want to show the one that very very similar to this style where it's a a paddle release and you can do this one one handed you can push push it like that and drop your mag uh which is kind of nice i kind of like that idea just being able to use that or the other hand if i wanted to 
Right. And the fact that it's a paddle, you have a little bit more uh, surface area so you can push forward yeah. as well. And it's not going to get caught anything. If you One look of at the it, disadvantages is that it makes it hard to press the uh, bolt release yes. because it does, it's, it's right there. Face. It has to go right next to the trigger. Yeah. Uh, so it is a little bit harder to kind of get in around and, and hit that, uh, Hold that on bolt a second. release. Hold on <laughs> well, if you're gonna okay. mute in between don't say hold on a second just let me like keep you yammering <laughs> okay so but no hold yours up again i want you to show where your um so where the mag release is in relation to the trigger guard right here so it's, it's right at there. the front of the trigger right mm -hmm. trigger guard whereas the one that you and i both have now with the with the trigger with the trigger pack it's at the back of the trigger so you you have to push forward. One of the things that I find with that is you have to be really, really careful that you're not actually pressing your, your mag release, especially if you have gloves or anything like that on. I so, think, and, is this one more pronounced than yours or is it the same? I don't know. I think it's almost this, the same. It's a little bit. Yeah, this one's got like a, it feels like a little bit more space. Yeah. That's like a, that's a middle finger kind of an action on this one. This, sorry, for the audio listeners, I'm, I'm holding up a Tactical Solutions extended mag release. It, yeah. it kind of follows the trigger guard up until yep. the back of the trigger guard, and that's where it angles up. You press that with your middle finger to, to drop the magazines. Right, and it's great. It's fantastic. It's right then and there, but you could also have things that are hung up on it too, like as I said, gloves or anything if you shoot with gloves. So I just have to be careful with it. Nothing gets snagged on it because if it does, then you're going to be in the middle of your shooting and your magazine is going to drop. Mm -hmm. I feel like this one does a better job of like scalloping around the uh, uh, bolt release or the bolt hold open. So it's just a little bit easier to hit that guy. It just leaves a little bit more space for your finger yeah, to, to get in there and press right. it. Yeah, so yep. that's one thing to think yep. about when you're looking at these things is um, they might help with uh, dropping the magazine, but they might actually hurt uh, where it's time to uh, push the uh, push that bolt release in mm -hmm. and get that. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Anything, anything else? Did we talk sure. about everything? Uh, Trenching handles, trigger packs, um, barrels, uh, bolts. Uh, bolts. You've just got Ruger bolts, right? Um, yes, yeah, so I just got Ruger bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're yeah. cast, uh, so they're a little bit rougher in terms of finish, which makes them like you need to well, scrub them a bit when you clean them. Yeah, so um, the bolts themselves, as I said, the only one that I had, the, what, the original part that I have for my original 1022 was the, the bolt. It was the 50th anniversary, so it's a little bit more. It's not the original, original, like the pockmarked. Anyways, um, so um, again, I'm just touting uh, Great Birch Solutions. They were talking, it was, it, it was either today or yesterday, 180, I think it is, for their bolt. And this thing here, but it's got yeah. it's. This isn't this it's isn't got, a standard bolt. No, it's it's it, it looks great. The finish on it looks great. I don't have one in my hand, obviously, but it also has the uh, charging handle on. Charging it. handle. Um, it's a little bit more bolt, significant, rather than on the the recoil spring and the recoil yeah. spring. The bolt has a guide for the yeah. uh, recoil spring as well, which the right. um, standard ones don't. Oh, look at that! It's one ninety nine. So. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that probably I'm going to do a little bit of an upgrade to test it out, see how it works. Basically, well, uh, here I'll, I'll price out what you're what you'd be doing anyways. So, yeah. bolt uh, in Canada here are bolts. Uh, I mean, you're going to be spending 180 anyways. That's that's the lowest price, like a CNC aftermarket bolt you yeah. can get in Canada right now, anyways. This is not the same as that kid bolt, though. This is better. It's got yeah. a charging handle built in, and it's got that, um, uh, what do you call guide it? Their guide rod uh, guide on the bolt, oh. uh, which you're not going to get with the kid bolt. And you're also right. getting a charging handle, which is another, like, 50 bucks. So this right. is... Um, these guys must be like underpricing all their stuff right now just to like get get a, a spot, like a good spot in the market because this is below the value of what it should be. Yeah. They're they're doing a lot of advertising, a little bit of um of um I think a little bit of loss leader piece just so that they can get out into the market. Yeah. I really want to get my hands on one of those and test it out. Um yeah. 
Well, I mean, the like the the bolt is one thing that's interesting, and the, and the guide on there. Some of them even have like some bolts, some aftermarket bolts have a central guide rather yeah. than one that's off to the side, or they have like dual rod guides, like something just to to prevent that that like angling that happens. Because yeah. when you when you pull like one of these bolts, like there is a little bit of resistance because you're basically like pulling the bolt off to the side a little bit, and you're scraping yeah. the side just a little bit, and not enough to really care. But uh, that's that is what's happening when you're pulling the bolt yeah. on one of these things. Yeah, and this thing's so light and handy. Every time I play, I hold it up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I I really like um after checking out that barrels by the inch. I really like the idea of a twelve inch barrel on a twenty two. Like it's not as it's a little bit louder than the uh, like a sixteen or an eighteen. Uh, but you're not really giving up anything in in velocity. No, and it's stiffer for the same for for less weight. Like you go with a longer barrel, so you get a, a better burn. But if you're, yeah. if you're like, depending on the ammunition, there may be no difference or it might be like 20 or 30 FPS. I don't know if it matters just for the handiness of, of like one of these, uh, uh, 12 inch barrel ones. So good. So good. If I could, if I could cut the barrels on the other ones, I would do that. You'd do that just to make it so handy. <laughs> All right. Let's put, yeah. let's. Let's uh, have a look at some of the comments as well. Chris uh, W. He actually posted Brownells parts bolts Ruger ten twenty two competitive bolt assembly. So he posted a link That's to the that there. One. Yeah. 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 And uh, let's see, Luke Gaudin, he's talking about, he's asking about the RIAM-22. He thinks it's a 1022 knockoff. Did you ever try one? Any good? He's asking. I've seen them. Uh, they have a very stiff bolt hold open thing like that yep. slide yeah uh at least on I've, I've seen a couple of them and, and i remember i had two of them at one of my last events and uh the bolt hold open was just like brutally stiff to just push that guy in and, right. uh, and get it to let go of the uh of the bolt so i used one at my first apple seed down in the u.s it was a piece of shit just let you know <laughs> Literally. You have more refined <laughs> tastes these days, though. You're talking about like it was a piece of shit, but you got you have a you have a three thousand dollar ten twenty two on your table. <laughs> yeah. Everything's garbage compared to it. <laughs> well, uh, so the issues that I had with it was a couple. So yeah, it would uh, not the magazines were getting stuck in it. Um, uh, I couldn't get them out. Uh, we actually had to take it apart to try and get the magazines out of it. So uh, there were some issues also with accuracy falling apart a little bit too as well. So as soon as we got back to uh, Canada, promptly put it in the safe, went out and bought a 1022 um, and uh, then promptly gave the, uh, the rifle to a friend of ours. He said, "Here you go." He said, "I don't have a twenty-two. Here you go. Here, here's the, uh, here's the ten twenty. Sorry, not ten twenty-two. Here's the uh, Rock Island Armories uh, little twenty-two blinkster and enjoy." <laughs> Didn't even charge him for it. <laughs> So, um, Luke, uh, you, it's a cheaper version. Go on out and buy it if you'd like to try it out. It's great for kids and different things like that, but there are some issues with it, or at least I experienced significant issues with it. So, um, yep. it just reinforced uh, the thought of going and getting a 1022. That's all. Rod was asking, uh, Rod, Doug, Doug, Doug Rod, was asking Rod if Burke. I can shoot uh, this 12 inch uh, one handed. Uh, easily he's he says you know why i'm asking that's yeah. one reason is because he he wants to be able to shoot with one hand yeah very easily he, he has issues with his other. i don't know how it would be from like prone and that kind of thing trying to shoot from one hand or or uh sitting but i could do it standing but how steady is it uh i would need to go shoot it on paper because just holding it and looking like a meter in front of me is not not really and and left-handed just so i don't like bother you guys so let's turn on the red dot let's see what i can do here not uh, as steady as my two hands <laughs> you're, you're welcome luke yeah so but that is actually so if you're shooting uh, uh steel if you're doing a steel challenge that's the perfect 22 rifle for that right there not a bad small game rifle either for how small and compact it is and simple red dot, just <laughs> put the dot on the target, and oh, do I keep hitting the microphone? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Tough luck. I want to get a cheek. Pr- I, don't, I, don't, I don't like going left hit lefty on this thing. I guess I could do that. But yeah, for small game, that'd be fun too. That'd be easy. I could get kids to shoot small game with this thing. Like get yeah. kids to shoot squirrels and whatnot. That would work. Laser light show. Mm-hmm. Oh, pick them off. Oh man. Have, have we uh, have we done this topic to death? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. We spent how long talking about ten twenty twos? Hour. Yeah. It's one yeah. of our favorite subjects. Something like that. Though. Extractors. I put in some oh, crap. extractors into some of these. Yeah, that's a good idea. So um so I changed the extractor on my factory ten twenty two after I think it was fifty five thousand rounds. I had worn off one side of it. So uh Volkorsen, so do you have you have the list? Which ones do you recommend for it? Uh well one of the only ones you can find are the Volkorsen ones, so that's what I recommended. I okay. didn't make a list on extractors. You did there was some there was some parts. Why I not? Just, uh, what about <laughs> firing pins? What about titanium firing pins? What about safeties? What about extended safeties? I'd have to like, I'd have to add. Oh, no, no, we're not doing next. Well, actually, yeah. You don't have a titanium firing pin in your bolt? No. You're not high speed, low drag. <laughs> what about, I suppose your receiver pins are the factory garbage and you don't have stainless oversized friction fit pins you, uh, holding your trigger group in. That is correct. It's easier to take them out though. And so you can of drop course, in and yeah. drop out. And, and, and like right. who, really, who really cares about that stuff, no. right? Like as long, as long as you have like a good uh, fit from your, from your action to your stock, who cares? And even like, you don't even really need a free float. Like people have patched with this rifle and, and gotten high scores with it. And it's, it's not a free float. That barrel is resting on the stock. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Not for doesn't me. matter. No. Okay. Yeah. I think we got it. Done like dinner. We keep saying that. Right. Okay, let's move on then. Let's go on to listener feedback. Listener feedback is brought to you by Army DC Gunsmith. Army DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bloom, park rising, and Cerakote finishes as well as wood refinishing and every other type of refinishing as well. Uh, check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at uh, dcgunsmith.ca. Uh, and it is not spelled funny. It's spelled the French way, Adriel. I heard you last week talking about him. So, Adriel uh, Michaud. Adriel Michaud. You are like the most Anglo- Anglophone Frenchman I know. Anyways, uh, it, it yeah, check him out on Facebook, and you can also check him out on the Instagram as well because he posts on there too. Tell Denis hi and that we sent you, and then yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get into the we've been doing the feedback as we go on um, on uh, the Facebook. Facebook Live. So why don't we get into the listener feedback that is uh, emails. So I'm going to take the one from... Why don't you, actually, why don't you take the one from Josh? From Josh. Be- Hi, guys. What's your opinion on triggers, specifically triggers for the 1022? I am building a precision tr- shooter using the barrel, receiver, and stock from Grey Birch Solutions. I'm thinking to decide which trigger to use. I have a Ruger, uh, Ruger BX trigger and another firearm, and I don't think I am going to use that for this one as it's not quite high-end enough. I'm thinking either a kid or a Timney uh, trigger, but I'm open to suggestions. My question is whether you would suggest a single stage or a two stage and why. Also, which brand of trigger you'd recommend? I would prefer to stay below a three hundred dollar budget, but if the value justified it, I would spend more. Thoughts. So, if he's going with Kid or Timony, he's going to be above three hundred. Mm-hmm. So, just to let you know. Uh, so, Timony has a one stage trigger. Kid has a two stage trigger. Uh, the one stage is good for example, like we were talking about it when we had the guys on from. Um, Action uh, shooting. Gothic if you're going to do action if shooting, you're gonna one do, stage uh, is, yeah. is the way to go. But if you're, um, precision. If you're, if you're looking for precision, then it's a two-stage trigger. So it depends on what you're going to be doing with it. So it's like tomatoes, tomatoes. I do know I've tried out at the two-stage kid trigger in the rifle that shot a 246 at the Maple Seed. That mm-hmm. was Corey Johnson's rifle. He dropped in. He a had a kid in there as well. <laughs> Yeah. Com- and I just, oh. 
Anyways, so, <laughs> so I tried out his, and it's totally different, but it's a really beautiful trigger. I love my Timmy trigger. It's, as I said, it's one and a half pounds, very short take up on it, and it's one stage. So uh, You can go with a, like, with a two stage trigger, you can generally, like, they're a little bit safer because they yeah. have more travel. That's uh, you can't make a single stage trigger where if you just breathe on it, it goes off because they're just, they're just dangerous, right? Uh, whereas with a two stage, you've got that little bit of extra travel. That's uh, uh, a little bit of more of a safety in there built in, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. But for three gun, single stage, single yep. stage all the way. So if you're running and gunning with a twenty two, a ten twenty two, uh, go for go for a single, single stage. stage. You can dance on the trigger. Let's move. If you- yeah. So if you're going to do precision, then drop in the kid. And the kid's a little bit more expensive than the Timini as well. You're talking about four hundred and fifty ish. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're uh they're up there. Is yeah. that what I put on there? Kid single stage, you can find them for three eighty. Uh two stage for four seventy. Yeah. Well quartz and TG two thousand, which we didn't talk about, those are around three sixty in Canada. Yeah. Timney is up there. CMC, Powder River, all have trigger packs. Uh, yeah. Okay. But I'm not rich enough to like buy those and like test them against each other. <laughs> Anyways, uh, when do you also take this one from a listener? Uh, don't buy the Cabela's uh, rimfire scope. The glass is nice, but the reticles are garbage and they break. I'd look at a Vortex rimfire, as Kelly suggested, because of the warranty. If someone's looking sub $100, the Simmons or the Tasco don't have great glass, but they're robust enough. Uh, as for new gunny issues, the 300 Win Mag, ugh, pretty much every time it's a newbie that's been lied to by people that think they're experts. If I could give one piece of advice to all newbies, it would be this. Don't listen to people who act like they know everything. I think that's I think that's good, like a general that's life good advice. advice. <laughs> Don't listen to people who say they know everything or act like they know everything. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you about the Tasco. Um, people come to events that I've been to, different ones, and they the ones with the Tasco. By the end of it, the Tasco's he says robust. Toast. Yeah. Enough. I've actually seen the glass fall out of several Tasco scopes, and um, yeah. So I've, I've got a, like, I've got a Tasco yeah. Rimfire 4X. I think it's a My 4X. Itchy. And uh, if the light comes towards you, it's unusable. Like that, just you just can't see anything. It's it's just so I don't know. There must be something broken inside of it, or the coating mm-hmm. is worn off, or there is no coating or something. Because yeah. any kind of like if the sun or there's too much light coming in from the front, it just doesn't work. It's just yeah. n- not usable. Um, which yeah, you, you want your scope to work with you know right. some light coming from the front. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to under a hundred dollars, go buy paratexites. Like I'd rather you do that than actually get a Tosco. I'm just saying. Or get an old uh, one of like the package scopes that came on like your hunting rifle. Chuck that on your on your rim fire. No, they're gonna suck, I, but it, it'll be. Fun. I think this guy wrote in because we were talking about it last week. Remember the guy that wanted to replace his scope package that was on his. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. What did he? What did he have? Did he have a Remington Merlin or something? Sixty four. Was it no, Savage sixty four? It wasn't a Savage sixty four. Mm. Anyways. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But anyways, so vortex, vortex. Get the cheap vortex. Yeah. The two to seven crossfire. Yeah, and yeah. it's cheap, but it's actually pretty reliable. It's very low, low maintenance. Like, there's nothing to it. You just got cross air reticle, and but if you do do something to it, and doesn't matter whether you step on it. I'm not saying step on your or whatever, but if you do, you can actually go and take it, and they'll replace it, and they'll trade it because mm-hmm. the warranty on it. So that's yeah. the best piece. Whereas he's, he's talking about a Tosco, a the glass falls out you know it is what it is you're not gonna yeah anyway. and those low-end bushnells aren't much better either like the very no. very lowest end of the bushnells are basically the same garbage yeah yeah all right do you want me to take this next one from ed yeah doug and uh luke are talking to, to each other they've taken over the uh the new suit Good. so there's nothing Good. on there that yeah. we have to talk to our dress Fantastic. so yeah Glad take this got one. that under <laughs> under handle yeah take this one from ed please uh, hi guys, trying to keep uh, trying to keep you guys on track. No left turns. Oh uh, God! <laughs> the Night Force NX8 four to thirty two by fifty 
is impressive on my $250 rifle. Oh, look at I, that. I got a screaming deal on it for 2600 bucks. <laughs> now to the reality on updating the scope for my Remington 597. Oh, this is him. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I looked at the Vortex 2-7x32 to rimfire. I currently own four other Vortex scopes. I also looked at the Sig Sauer Whiskey 3 39 by 40 okay. I settled on the Athlon Talos. Okay. Talos. <laughs> 3 to 12 by 40 with the parallax adjustability. Gives me a lot of flexibility if I want to shoot longer uh, or PRS matches. That's Uh, true. Just waiting on Black Friday or Cyber Monday sales. I do, however, want to shoot a maple seed. If Kelly could get down to southwestern Ontario when I'm free. Thanks for the advice. Okay, Ed. Seriously? Let me know. Drive, drive, drive to where Kelly is. (laughs) Like, London, 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 um, London. Southwestern is, uh, by the way, we have, uh, we've had, I think, four or five events this year in Southwestern Ontario. And what that means is that we now have a few more instructors in that area. So I'm super excited. These people are like top notch too. Like these people are the ones that are like doing ORPS, CRPS, and they are super competitive as well, but they know their shit. Like these people are good instructors. So Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about it because next year we're going to have a few more events down in Southwestern as well. And that means that we can probably I'd get you in someplace. So super excited. London. Yeah. London. Well, we did uh, Mount Bridges. Mount Bridges was the first of one of the first events we did, and that's one that's the one with the brick pizza oven that we gotta go to the airport, the active mm-hmm. air strip. And it's also the one that we had the uh the tornado at. So um there's that. We also had London as well. Uh, twice and we were we were there another time too so anyways but next year hoping to get there a little bit more often ed come out we'd love to have you on the line and then actually patch you up and then become an instructor as well and then you can do all kinds of events in southwestern ontario that means kelly doesn't have to do them anymore yay i'm really curious about the athlon me too rick likes those how much was that? Like he was talking about, he was trying to look at a scope that was on the cheap. So he went around the, let's look at it. Oh, you're going to look it up for me, aren't you? So I'm try. Yeah. But he said he's looking like he's put, anyways. Okay. Uh, I might have to, uh, that might be from mystic precision. He doesn't have his price online. You got to email him. Oh, Jerry. By the way, that. if you're looking for extended rails, go to mystic precision as well for the 1022. Yeah, I got some. a couple things. They also have shilling barrels. Yeah. Yep. A couple of things they got that are like the fancy Skookum uh, 22 stuff. We didn't really talk about putting putting scopes on top. I think that's a whole separate issue, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different a whole, day. A whole topic. We need to get some people on here for that, too. Mm-hmm. We should really do that. And then we were also talking about getting somebody to talk about mounting a scope as well. So you don't screw you just it up. put it on you put you put your scope on wherever and then you just start tightening until it <laughs> stop clicks. it. You hear a <laughs> click or like uh it starts twisting a little bit too easy and you stop. And you just don't do it anymore. <laughs> Luke, don't apologize. And Brian, Wolverine Splice will have it. We'll have what? The to Athlon. Okay. But their All website right. doesn't come up very easily. No. All right. Let's get on with the show because I'm getting hangry. I need food. Uh, if you would like to email the show, you can do so at slamfryradio at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and we can, yeah, we can review what you have to say. Anyways, uh, podcast reviews don't have any, uh, don't have any new ones. Uh, you can go and actually give us a review on any of the apps that you listen to us on though. We'd love to hear from you. Also Patreon, no new Patreon is this week. However, you can go and check us out on patreon.com slam fry radio, show us a little love if you'd like to, and then we can get cool things like green screens where we can post pictures of cats with lasers coming out of their eyes as well. For those who've already done that and consistently actually have supported us, we wanted to see thank you uh if you'd like to as well as support the shows in other ways you can do so by going on to our website you can click on the cabela's link and uh order stuff through cabela's and they'll show they will um 
and give us a little bit of cash for you doing that because it's a referral. And last but not least, you can also, there is an Amazon link there as well. What's the link for, by the way? Because it's a specific link, but you don't actually have to order it's what to that shirts. is. It's to uh, a shirt, a fancy Hawaiian shirt. You can buy that too if you want. Oh, cool. Yep. That could the be like a... The Athlon Talos is like two two twenty five. Oh, well, right now. So for Black true. Friday, it might be like under 200, which is oh. very close to where that crossfire was. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, go ahead and do that. Show some love. Uh, occasionally, we'll be doing the Cabela's, what you bought at Cabela's, and let's actually critique it and make fun of what your purchases may be. <laughs> Buy some weird stuff. <laughs> Buy some weird stuff out of the box. Actually, oh, that's got to that's gotta be what we got to do. <laughs> it's got to be like one of those Walmart shopping cart things where it's like you, you, you go up to them and it's like uh, duct tape, rope, lie, and a shovel. <laughs> That's what do you gotta, you know you gotta do the equivalent from Cabela's. <laughs> hmm. No? A hatchet, a shovel, a hmm. I don't know. Anyways. It's okay. too it's too close to like what you'd need for deer. It would it wouldn't even raise an eyebrow. No, it really wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do shout outs. What do you got? Uh the ROs who helped put on the three gun match and plan it and design it and it went great. Excellent. Didn't stay all night. Was done with plenty of daylight oh left. Oh my god, that's so good, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, it was nice to be able to drive, like, because it had been snowing all day, it was nice to be able to drive back in the light and not, because in the morning when we drove there, it was like Star Wars with, like, the snow coming past, and, like, it was it was sketch. It was super sketch. I'm glad it, I didn't have to drive home in that, just the morning when I was tired. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to give a huge shout out to all of the IITs as well as the participants at the EOSC, EOSC, which is um, a club that's just outside of Ottawa. It is a beautiful club. They had great facilities for us. I wanted to say thank you to them as well. But the IITs, fantastic job. Uh, and also our newly appointed instructor as well, Kelly Kincaid, who did a great job running the line and keeping us on, on timelines. And also to the uh, uh, participants, you're fantastic. Participants, eager and everything, but you also stayed afterwards and helped clean up, and it, we got it done in record time, and we were able to get out of there before uh, the sunset on us. So thank you. I wanted to say thanks for that. Yeah, and a great year too, by the way, everybody uh, within the Project Maple Seed organization. We're officially done, so we'll be um, celebrating a great 2020. Uh, it sucked because of COVID, but we overcame those challenges. We were like the Marines. We overcame, adapted, and whatever. So, <laughs> ate, ate some seal blubber and drank piss. Have you ever done that? that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have some seal. I can actually arrange that. Mm. We, uh, we Baby get, seal specifically. If you we could get, give me some baby seal. That would be... I don't know about baby seal, but we get um, – so we get country food at the uh, – at the institution. So one of the elders is uh, the Inuk elder and he brings in all the stuff. So mm. seal we can do baby seal. I don't know if it's baby seal. Prefer, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I would prefer if it was a baby seal. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Let's sign off. Uh, all right. Everybody, thanks for listening tonight. Just uh, want everybody to remind everybody to go on over to Gunners of Canada, the uh, the website there. Check us out on our thread there. Go over and like us on Facebook. Join the CCFR. Reach out to your provincial legislators and also to talk about the upcoming handgun ban. And uh, we will see you next week. Yes, 